What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to to the uh, 15th episode of That Time I Got Reincarnated Slime Season 2. This one's titled Ramrus's Warning. So yes, we are getting a warning from Ramrus uh, that, well, uh, Tempest is doomed, basically, um, with uh, all the events that are going on currently. Um, I don't believe that's necessarily going to be the case, because we're going to act to, obviously, stop that from happening. It is very much in our interest to stop it, um, but I guess we'll see what can be done uh, as we formulate our plans here. So... We're still doing the uh, uh, meeting, we're still doing a lot of uh, talking, which is fine. Uh, I kind of need it to happen, I suppose. Uh, just like how the first couple of episodes of the first half of this season were uh, wrapping up a bunch of things from like reintroducing characters and reintroducing dynamics and stuff to get the audience back into the show, uh, and then going into the next arc of the show. Uh, this is very much setting up a lot of uh, the background information, and things necessary to proceed forward, which is probably going to be the confrontation with Clayman. That feels like what's going to be happening here. Um, it's still the matter of what the hell Milim and Frey were doing in the destruction of um, in the destruction of uh, uh, Eurasania and uh, defeating Carrion. Like, what was the purpose behind that? Um, we don't really have much. Uh, we don't really have much information on that other than Clayman might be manipulating things but then we know that Clayman with his what, what are they called like the Harlequin Alliance or something like that um are serving under they're serving under the demon lord who is actually uh Kigali the the what is she like why even is she to Yuki like assistant I guess um but that uh, Kagali is actually a reincarn well, a surviving demon lord, uh, just using it as like a homunculus body, and it's actually Yuki who we met back in season one, who's pulling the strings here on what's going on. So it's not even Clayman that's pulling the strings of things; it's Yuki pulling the strings to make Clayman think he's pulling the strings, and things are going on. And I think they mentioned something about Wolpergis. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly at all. I or Valpurgis. I I assume because it is German in origin, the word. I'm going to assume it's like Valpurgis as meant to be like the pronunciation, but I don't know what it's actually pronounced in universe here. Um, I've only ever heard that word once before, and that was in uh, Madoka. So yeah, that kind of that's where my mind went initially. But I was like, oh okay. But no, Walper, uh, Volpergis, whatever you want to say it, uh, is actually a genuine thing based on like a saint or something in Germany mainly. Uh, but it's like spreads around uh, Europe a bit. Um, but yeah, things are happening there. So we're going to start going into that and I guess preparing what we're going to do uh, to um, act with this. Because we're not going to be passive and just let everything happen. We're going to get involved in some way in this case of, well, we've still got to just sort out Falmouth, get that sorted uh look into what's happening with Milim if we can make contact with her probably won't be able to but we'll see and then deal with Clayman in some form or fashion um also the fact that we are a demon lord now might change some things that are going on with the current demon lords I don't know what's going on there yet um but there's a lot going on let's just put it that way uh when it comes to this so um yeah, there was more information, I think, on World Purgus last episode, but I can't remember what, exactly what it was. I think there was some, like, actual, like, mechanic information on, like, what the purpose was. But I don't quite remember all of it. So maybe they'll recap a little bit in here with Ramrus's warning. Maybe Ramrus actually knows a bit more of what's going on, what the plan is. And so we'll learn a bit more as time goes on. But we'll see. Anyway, uh, as per usual, uh, here on YouTube, we do time based format accidents. If you want to see the full picture and picture, you can go to my page in the description below. Four pounds a month gets access to all picture and picture access I do on the channel, which is everything from the current seasonal lineup, as well as Patreon request shows such as World Trigger, Symphony Gear, and Lock Horizon, all of which took a break this week so I can actually catch up on shows that I've been missing. Uh, so thank you for your patience. We'll be back in full swing next week, and we should be able to wrap up Lock Horizon and World Trigger ready. Well, World Trigger ready for season three, of course, and uh, Lock Horizon we should just be able to wrap up uh, in, in, to in totality. Uh, with season three maybe extending a little bit into the full season, but otherwise should be complete. Um, and then Super Good GX, which will be starting and hopefully completing as well. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, here on YouTube we do time based. So bottom left of the screen, you'll see a time of the episode. I can't stand free to one play. And on play, say episode, I say episode, and we should be in sync. We watched this one on Crunch Roll since the other ones are less the series, of course. 
Uh, no logos, we're just going straight into the episode from a black screen. You can use screen flash on my face, the mic, all this by my headset to tell when the seas are transitioning. That should help you sync it up as well. So, with all that said, let's get into uh, this week's episode, shall we? In 3, 2, 1, play. Let's get down to business. There's Ramaris. Yes. Yep, there's the warning. Love the art style. Diablo, what are you doing? <laughs> uh. mm. I mean, yes. Oh, uh, I'm glad you're all sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> this poor guy. Ten great demon lords, okay. Very labyrinth. Has everyone forgotten her already? <laughs> yeah, can't be surprised anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um. The Breeze Dragon. Uh huh. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's just like the hell is this play thing <laughs> okay None of these three. You know, so we don't know what her move is going to be yet. All right. I think the eight stars mean something, but I don't know what yet. Okay. Okay, we'll not say that. Mm hmm. So we'll mask the numbers. Mm hmm. Okay, reviving. Okay. <laughs> Still out. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm 
Right. Mm hmm. You'd be seriously doubtful. No. They already hate, have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Potentially. Hmm. I don't think all of them will believe that, though. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. They share the temper's name. Mm-hmm. Diplomatic relations should still be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, he's new king of Falmouth. Creating a new nation out of it, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Civil war within the country. Okay. We're inciting a civil war. Interesting. He already has popularity. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Can you withstand that pressure? <laughs> uh huh. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Is that enough? Yes. Didn't have to repeat it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm 
Hmm. Agricultural production, okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Suggestion? Oh, how so? Some nobles, okay. Lauren Herman. Okay, have some nobility backing. That's good. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, okay. Distant relative. Rose of Death. <laughs> Gopta. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, get on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uphold all costs, okay. Hmm.
One more question, all right. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's a very good question. As you even... <laughs> uh... Mm-hmm. He's already done it for this kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though it's just page turning in the background. <laughs> Whoever thought to just add that little bit was genius. All right, things going well. So done with dip uh, diplomacy. Mm hmm. Bloom and Dwarven and Falion. Very good. All right. Mm hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, meeting over. Okay, back to Clayman. Mm hmm. Oh. Mm. 
Well, hmm, non-aggression packs don't tend to last. Hmm. Well. Right, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Millim. Millim's a weird factor in this. Whoa. Whoa. I mean. <laughs> okay. Is that the first time we've seen Clayman actually, like, crack? Like... No pun intended with the glass shattering, but... Is that really, like, the first cracks we've seen in his... Like, persona? I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. Alright, next time. The Congress Dances. Hmm. Are we talking about the Congress of uh, Falmouth, I'm assuming? That would, like, that's the big, probably the Congress I think of first because that's what I would assume that would imply. I feel like that's what you do first. Like, we'd handle all the Falmouth-based stuff, like the Civil War that apparently we're going to have in Falmouth. I feel like we're going to cover most of that, and then we'll cover uh, Wapagus and defeating Claimer and stuff like that. That seems to be where things are going. That's how I would order it, at least, for this second season. Uh, it depends how much we're actually going to spend on uh, the Civil War in Falmouth and the things that are going on there. Like, how much are we really going to be, like paying attention and observing the things that are happening there. Will that be like a cut-for-time anime thing, or was it even that uh, well-described in the light novels? That's something I'm kind of curious uh, to see as time goes on. Um, but yeah, Milim is a real chaos factor in this, because why is Milim... Why did Milim and Frey wipe out the capital of uh, Eurasania? What was the purpose of that? If they're implying Clayman wanted them to do that... And Clayman's now going to invade Eurasania and use them for his own awakening. Is Clayman actually a demon lord, actually? I don't even know that, to be honest. Like, is Clayman a demon lord? I believe so, right? Then why does he need another awakening? 
Unless he's trying to go beyond that? Is there a way to go beyond that? Like, what's he trying to do there? I'm assuming there's probably a step beyond Demon Lord that he's trying to obtain in that instance, but... I, I, I wonder why he's after killing a bunch to awaken himself when I think he is a Demon Lord. I think he even says so as much as to call him a Demon Lord. But yeah, what did he have on Milim that got her to act? Unless Milim was already going to go after Carrion? But I don't know why. I don't know why. But yeah, that was kind of, that was a kind of a big warning from uh, Laplus to Clayman to be like, "Hey, d don't overestimate how much control you have on Millen because yeah, it's likely your goals just to happen to align on that one. <clears throat> we still haven't had a Millen Rimuru scene since his ascension." That's going to be a very interesting meeting between those two when it eventually happens, because Milim and Rimuru are besties. But now Rimuru is a demon lord and is starting to approach closer to her power. I, I'm sure Milim still far more powerful than Rimuru. Because like, here's the thing with like, these OPMC-type shows. Rimuru is not the most powerful in this universe, as far as I'm aware. I think, and it's intentionally put that point. Like, Rimuru is not always just the physically strongest and can always win a fight. We even saw that against Hinata, who had full preparation against him, to the point where he couldn't win the fight. He had to just escape and run. And pick his fights where necessary. I think the same goes for Milim. He knows he can't just outright win in a fight against Milim. And even with his ascension as Demon Lord, and with Raphael and everything, I don't think he could win against Milim either. He's having to play the diplomacy game. And I think that's what makes this series a bit more interesting, is that we do have the diplomacy aspect to it, right? Like, we have Rimuru running a country and running the diplomatic relationships with other countries, as well as him actually being a combat fighter and everything going on. And this is something I said about Realist Hero when we got that uh, this season, that... Um, Realist Hero is going on from the perspective of managing a country and a kingdom and everything that goes with it, which is something you don't typically see in most Isekai-type shows, at least in anime form. I don't know if light novels ever go far enough to that even their protagonists end up in this sort of situation, but this is something that Slime's doing and I'm very much appreciative of. I know many people will probably say that this episode uh, and last episode, with so much time being spent on that meeting, for example, I'm sure many people will say that it was boring or it's like oh exposition all this like come on let's just get into it it's like no you need this exposition for a show like this because there's a huge universe of stuff here and there's a lot going on with it like we haven't even I, I there's so much more of this as well like that's the scary thing there's so much more of this to come as well i hope a season three gets announced at the end of this it would be kind of crazy if they didn't i mean what else is 8-bit gonna do this has been their, this has been one of their big things. Like, they've had a couple of shows in between, but none of them really have sequels. They do have a uh, fourth season of, um, is that the climbing show, Encouragement of Climb? Yeah, so they've got season four of Encouragement of Climb, which is a series I actually kind of want to get into at some point, because it looks pretty decent and it looks like a type of show I would really get into. Uh, but yeah, 8-Bit really have been riding this slime wave, especially this year. It was meant to start last year, obviously, but with COVID, things got delayed, but... Yeah, I, I do hope this gets renewed for Season 3. I think it's popular enough that it will get there. Like, the Western reception for this show is incredible. Always has and always will be. Um, I just hope that the Japanese reaction is still favourable, because I want a Season 3 of this as well. I know we've got so much more of this season to go, but I want a season three announcement as soon as this ends as well. We'll see. But anyway, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the ones per usual. Leave a like if you did, as well as your comments for you for the episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe as well to see next week's episode, as well as the rest of the summer 2020 online. You can find it on the channel. Thank you for watching. Till next time. See you guys later.